Wyoming lies a time capsule from the Ice Age. It contains not one, but two super-sized mammals who once ruled North America. Ferocious beasts who dwarf even the most powerful predators of today. Now, new discoveries bring to life these true Ice Age monsters. They're the Earth's first fighters. The ultimate predators. New discoveries in forensic science bring to life the prehistoric art of war. This is Jurassic Fight Club. Today, our planet is in the throes of dramatic global change. Rising temperatures are triggering chain reactions that have adverse effects throughout the planet. But does the Earth hold clues to prove this has happened before? And if so, how have past dramatic shifts thrown off the balance of the natural order? Ten thousand years ago, the close of the Pleistocene era, Earth is very different from the way it is now. Rising temperatures and an ice age that saw great glaciers covering most of the northern hemisphere. Cold adapted creatures are driven into extinction, allowing new plants and animals to take their place. In North America, glaciers that once covered New York City to a depth of over two miles retreat under rising temperatures. These massive sheets of ice gouge deep scars in the landscape, leaving behind a legacy carved in stone. In what will become Wyoming, the dramatic climate changes have a catastrophic impact on life. Giant beasts like the woolly mammoth and giant sloth die off. They're replaced by better adapted creatures that migrate across land bridges from the north. But this migration has repercussions. Massive mammals clash for the first time, and some of these are predators. In 1971, in a remote location in Wyoming, paleontologists discover a massive hole in the ground. The cave opening acts as a trap where unwary creatures fell in and dropped to their death. They named the location Natural Trap Cave. Laying 85 feet below the opening in a 100-foot diameter underground cavern, they find the remains of thousands of Ice Age mammals, among them the broken skeleton of a giant bear named Arctodus. The thing that oppresses everybody when they first see an Arctodus fossil is just how big it is. The largest bears living today are the Alaskan brown bears, the Kodiak bears, and the polar bears. And an Arctodus would be about twice as large as either one of those. The size of this bear was staggering. Arctodus stood 12 feet tall. Its body was 15 feet long. And it weighed a massive 2,500 pounds. It towered over today's grizzlies. Paleontologists continued to study the remains. Along with sheer mass, Arctodus had two distinctive features that differentiated it from modern bears. The first was its oversized teeth and short but powerful muzzle, from which it derives its nickname, the short-faced bear. This is the skull of a giant short-faced bear, and you can see why they're named this. They have a very shortened snout in proportion to the overall skull. Their skull is actually very wide for its size. Here are the canines. You can see they're very long and robust. The teeth here are very bear-like. They're just basically bear teeth that are scaled up, developed for crushing. Very powerful muscles would have attached right here, here, and up here that would have given it a very powerful bite. If we open the mouth then, we can see those large canines. What it would be like to be on the dinner side of shore-faced bear. The second feature was its unusually long front legs. 
In modern grizzly bears, the front legs are shorter than those at the rear, allowing it to reach speeds of up to 35 miles per hour for a short distance. But in the mega bear, both front and rear legs were of equal length. This special adaptation may have allowed this bear to reach speeds in excess of 45 miles per hour and run for much greater distances. They moved with their front legs more oriented inward instead of like this, like we see in bears today, and that would have given them a more efficient gait. We now know that its long legs made it a monster apex predator a mammal that could run down its prey at long distances, particularly bison. With its long legs and huge size, which meant a very long stride, it could probably run pretty fast and for quite a while. So it had some chance of overtaking better runners like bison would be the obvious, probably the prey of choice for this animal. Soon, the raw power of the mega bear would become evident. As scientists continued to investigate, they realized that this animal was so massive, it even hunted and killed giant mammoths. In Utah, there was a mammoth found, a mammoth skeleton found, that had scratch marks on some of the bones that were the size and could have been done by the canines of a short-faced bear and short-faced bear remains were found alongside this mammoth. So there is evidence that these animals were eating other animals. This is the calcaneus, or heel bone, of a mammoth from Saltville, Virginia, the same site where we have recovered giant short-faced bear remains. If we look at it from this angle, we can see this cut where this large canine would have gone through this bone. These are very dense bones, not a soft area of the skeleton. And I can't think of anything else besides a giant short-faced bear that could have caused something like this. In fact, the mega bear's hunting territory is stunning. This bear was everywhere. The geographical distribution of giant short-faced bears is across North America, from Alaska all the way down into Mexico and from coast to coast. The only place that they were missing until recently was down in the very southeast. Now, we're finding that they were there. We've got some records from Florida. And we've got some other records from the extreme southeast. So they were all over the place. Even more evidence of the mega bear's range was unearthed in California's La Brea Tar Pits, one of the richest prehistoric traps in North America. Rancho La Brea is a unique situation where we have oil that has come up through the ground onto the surface and filled small cavities in the surface of the ground and set up a trap where animals would come in, get entrapped in this soil, muck with the asphalt, very sticky, would end up dying there, decaying there, and the bones being preserved by the oil itself. Since the discovery of the La Brea death trap, paleontologists have removed and cataloged over one million bones, representing over 230 different species of animals. The majority of these bones belong to herbivores, but among them were the bones of the mega bear. The discovery of the short-faced bear skeleton in the La Brea Tar Pits is pretty important because it's one more piece of evidence to show how far these bears roamed. And wherever they went, they took up the role as top predator. We now know that Arctotus employed two lethal weapons. First and foremost were its massive paws, embedded with grim reaper-like claws. The most powerful weapon in any bear's arsenal is his front paws. They have very powerful upper body strength. Uh, they have huge claws. If they swing those upper paws, they're going to do a lot of damage to anything they hit. Its paws were the size of a catcher's mitt, and its claws were eight inches long. One swipe could be enough to take the head off a grown man. Looking at the claws of this bear, they're designed for slashing meat, very deep injuries too. When he would grab an opponent or potential prey, 
He could use those claws to inflict some pretty dangerous stuff. You could cut between the ribs of an animal and literally reach some of the internal organs. Their fingernail was longer than a human's finger. These guys are enormous and they're powerful and they're designed for grabbing you and ripping you open. This mega bear's second weapon was its bone crushing teeth. They were even more powerful than that of its modern day relative, the grizzly bear. Grizzly bears have a bite force of over 1,200 pounds per square inch, but the more powerful jaws of the short faced bear gives it a bite force of over 2,000 pounds per square inch. It had four big canine teeth up front and several smaller meat slicing teeth in the back. This tooth configuration made this bear one of the most formidable predators on Earth. And once it clamped down with those jaws and teeth, no prey or rival stood much of a chance against it. Oversized teeth, sharp claws, speed, and its gargantuan size led experts to first believe that this was a predator with few adversaries. First of all, I don't think that any sane animal would try to engage with this huge short-faced bear. In fact, it probably was the bully of the plains. So no doubt it would have been very intimidating for other carnivores to come across. If, in fact, another carnivore would come into the scene, I would hope that that carnivore had friends with it. By studying its skeletal design and comparing it to the grizzly bear, Experts now believe the Arctotus would use its sheer size to stun its victim. They go straight in, and these bears, being extremely large size, are going to have this tremendous impact, rear up on the hind legs, show how big they are, which really magnifies this size, spread out those front paws, and open that big mouth to show those big teeth. I think that would scare almost anything away. Even though he's a massive animal, he can still sustain injury. So the first thing you want to do is you want to chase away your potential rival. But if that doesn't work, then you go to step two. Scientists determined that the bear, using all 2,500 pounds, was particularly well adapted to attack in close quarters. These short-faced bears would have been well adapted for close combat. And so at close distance, these exceptionally long arms with the big claws would have been really efficient tools for knocking away other predators. But by standing on its hind legs, the mega bear would reveal one vulnerable spot, its soft underbelly. If you try to attack the bear and it's in that position, then its uh, four paws are in perfect position to take a swipe at you. And if you come in too close, then you are going to become a participant in the famous bear hug, which is not also going to have a happy ending, especially because then it can reach down and bite you at that time, too. The mega bear could have pulled a door off a car with ease or crushed a steel drum like a soda can. But in the cave, a second super-sized Ice Age monster was found, and it would change everything we thought we knew about the Ice Age. The discovery of Natural Trap Cave in Wyoming reveals more than 40,000 fossils. Among them, the skeleton of a mega bear, called the God Bear by some for its awesome power. But scientists found something else in the cave, something that was just as menacing, a predator of gigantic proportions. Mega Lion. They are, in fact, the largest cats that ever lived. They are bigger than any other fossil cat. So what it means is that you're dealing with a lion that probably weighs seven or 800 pounds. In addition to weighing more than 700 pounds, the Mega Lion stood five feet tall with a body length of 11 and a half feet. With those dimensions, the mega lion dwarfed its modern cousins. It was bigger than a prehistoric raptor. The first thing that surprised paleontologists was its razor sharp claws. The mega lion has five.
bright, retractable claws on each foot. They're kept out of harm's way within these protective sheaths. But when he needs to use them, the Megalion would swing them into action like switchblade knives and could slice up prey. They could cut through flesh like a hot knife through butter. The second weapon was its powerful teeth and jaws. While a modern lion has a bite force of over 900 pounds, this lion had a bite force of over 1,800 pounds. Twice the cat, twice the muscle, twice the bite. As with most modern large cats, their teeth and jaws are very strong musculature in the skull to suffocate or snap the neck of the prey items. Equipped with 20 retractable claws and a mouthful of bone-crushing teeth, they were major predators. But paleontologists discovered something else, a weakness. These are not long-distance runners. They're really better designed for chasing prey over a short distance. Their legs, although relatively long, are not designed for a long-distance chase. They're ambush hunters. This makes hunting for the megalion nearly impossible. Without heavy cover to hide his body, he's unable to get close enough to ambush his prey. His weakness is his size and his inability to run down faster prey. Two apex predators, both occupying the same space. But why? Is it possible that they live during different eras? We find both lions and short-faced bears at Rancho La Brea and other sites around the, the North American continent that indicate that at least at times they shared the same territory. The discovery of both lion and bear in the La Brea tar pits proves without any doubt that these two predators lived at the same time in the same place. And as added proof, the bones of both have been carbon dated, and this proves that they lived together. The trap cave was likely located on a migration trail, a place where both beasts would have hunted. It's a site where, for the last 100,000 years, animals have been simply dropping in. And so many of them have dropped in that we've excavated about 5% of the deposit and gotten over 40,000 bones. And amongst the bones, we've gotten uh, complete skeletons of the American lion and the short-faced bear. But knowing that these two gigantic animals hunted in the same terrain only deepens the mystery. It's extraordinarily rare for two apex predators to hunt in the same territory. Why would these two predators be together? Then, another clue. Paleontologists went back 10,000 years and looked at the Earth that had just come out of an ice age. What they found was a world in turmoil. We can look at the geological record of Earth at that time and see that there were dramatic climate changes taking place. One of the most amazing pieces of evidence is found in solid rock. It shows that huge glaciers have been slowly moving southward for thousands of years, but then receded at an alarming rate. This is pretty clear evidence that the environment was not only changing, it was changing very rapidly. The end of the Ice Age saw a world that was melting away. Plants and animals hopelessly struggled to survive. The disruption triggered a massive food shortage. There was more competition for the available resources. This would tend to bring together big carnivores because if you are lacking a lot of resources, there's going to be more stealing of carcasses and more confrontational type things going on between the large lions and bears and carnivores that depend on these big herbivores for their daily food. In order to understand the range of the bear and lion, paleontologists actually gather evidence from a variety of different locations. They look for fossils and they discover that both bear and lion bones are found together as far north as Alaska, as far east as Florida, and really as far south as South America. 
So by comparing all these areas, they're able to figure out that these two predators were living together at the same time and therefore competing for the same food source. The mega bear had a hunting range of up to 200 square miles. Only a severe food shortage would have pushed him to invade another predator's territory. When two giant predators like the mega lion and short-faced bear inhabit the same territory, they would most certainly fight for dominance. Each animal would try to kill the other to remove the competition. Carnivores will often protect their territory and their range just because they don't like each other and not because they're hungry. It's just that you're in my territory, you're not welcome here, I'm gonna kill you. However, there was a hitch. When investigators studied the bones of the lion and bear, there were no bite marks. But experts believe that actually supports the theory that they fought to eliminate competition. That's why we don't find bite marks on the bones of either of these animals. When they fought, they fought to kill the other guy, not to eat him. Bite marks on bones usually happen after the meat has been removed and the bones are exposed. But if you're not eating the meat, then you're not exposing the bones, and therefore, you don't leave bite marks behind. As the ice caps melted, temperatures began to warm. Plant life that had adapted to colder climates died on a large scale. The result was a mass migration of the herbivores that consumed them. With fewer plant eaters to hunt, predators were also pushed to the edge. Usually, even the toughest predators will stick to their own territory to avoid risky clashes with other meat eaters. But when the food gets scarce, caution is abandoned. At the end of the Ice Age, the mega lion and the mega bear were pushed to desperate measures that the world had not seen before and would never see again. Grizzly bear of today has sharp teeth in front to tear meat and flat teeth in the back to eat vegetation. The mega bear has almost all sharp teeth, attesting to its endless appetite for prey. The mega lion had the same number of teeth as the African lion, but they were over 25% larger. These two apex predators dominated North America like no mammals have ever ruled it before. If we look at the strengths of a short-faced bear for comparison to the lion or comparison to modern bears, they were very different. They were really long-legged, particularly their front legs were long. The sheer size of this bear gives it a huge advantage over the lion when it comes to muscle mass. These are remarkably powerful animals and their legs, arms, and body are loaded and packed in muscle. The bear was strong enough to have actually lifted a full-grown bison off the ground. Well, I think the first thing that we should realize is that we're looking at the epitome in these two animals. The American lion is arguably the largest and most powerful feline that ever lived. And the Short-faced bear is certainly the largest and most powerful bear that we have any evidence for. In fact, the short-faced bear is probably the largest and most powerful mammalian carnivore that we have. And as such, even though this would be one heckish, powerful lion, uh, this bear would be so much more powerful that I really think it could skin the lion. The mega lion was smarter than today's house cat. It knew how to use its speed to outmaneuver its prey. With lightning fast jabs and assaults, it moved with power and purpose. The short faced bear was not as strategically minded. Its plan of attack was limited to a headlong rush. The bear is actually pretty fast. 
It's got those elongated legs because it's designed to run over a long distance. So speed-wise, it may not have been as fast as the lion, but it certainly could run much greater distances than the lion. The lion, on the other hand, is a cat. And cats are very quick, very agile, very fast animals. Cats are basically designed as hunt and kill predators. They are carnivores. That's what they do as carnivores, is they chase things down and kill them. These short-faced bears, on the other hand, what it looks like they were doing is that they were well adapted to move long distances, not necessarily to chase things down and kill them, or at least not in the way that cats do. Once the lion locked onto its prey, it was oblivious to everything else. It brought a killer focus to the hunt. The lion has retractable claws, and so they can protect those while they're just running. They can invoke those claws when they're struggling with animals, and they can pierce the skin with those claws. The short-faced bear do not have the retraction that the lion has. They're basically very long claws, and they could probably rake other animals and cause serious injury that way. When we compare it to the cats of today, the lion is very large, but the lions of the Pleistocene were a little larger, large teeth, large shearing teeth. When we compare that to the bear, the musculature on the top of their head tells us they had a powerful bite. The lower jaw musculature tells us they had a very powerful bite. The wear patterns on the teeth tell us that they were actually very powerful bites what advantage it had in its weaponry was these really long arms that it had. And so it could reach out and smack things with those long arms if it needed to. The Mega Lion had two major weapons in its arsenal. The first were its 20 razor sharp retractable claws. When not in use, the claws remained hidden within their sheath. And if the claws don't get you, the jaws will. With its massive canine teeth and 800-pound bite force behind them, this cat could take on any rival. Although these mammals were separated by millions of years from the dinosaurs, they still played the same basic roles. Looking at the megalion, it's easy to compare it to a Nanotyrannus. Neither were overly large predators, but they were equipped with the weapons and musculature that allowed them to take on prey much larger than themselves. Now, looking at the bear, its dinosaurian counterpart would be Tyrannosaurus. Like T-Rex, the bear could take on anything it wanted, and it had little to fear from anything other than a bigger bear. And if it didn't feel like catching its own prey, it could use its tremendous size and massive power to simply take food away from another predator. The mega bear was 12 feet tall and weighed 2,500 pounds. Its paws were the size of a human head, and its claws were eight inches long. And to back up that weapon was its bone-crushing teeth and vice-like jaws. It was a one-two punch that few survived. Even if it's not a chase down and kill predator, it's not something that you would want to mess with because it's way up off the ground. It has a very large appearance, very large head, very large musculature, very powerful looking. And so that threat alone would scare most things off. Based on studying how modern day lions attack, the mega lion is known to have been an aggressive predator who was smart enough to strike first in a fight. The body of any species is used in one unit. So we have a situation with the lion, for instance, that has the claws and the jaws, and they probably approach their prey items much like big cats do today. They basically had to run up and use their jaws, probably in a similar way, to dispatch their prey, either by biting on the muzzle or the neck, or maybe going for some other part of the body. The bear is one of the few predators that will take on another predator. Fighting with your prey is one thing, fighting with another predator is something totally different. The bear may have come upon other kills and chased away the attacker. In other words, it spots something killing prey, it waits till it kills it, then it moves in and chases it away. He may have been the bully of the plains, 
So his role is to fight predators more often than the lion does. The bear, with its thick coat, is greatly affected by the unprecedented global warming. The geological evidence shows us that the Earth was experiencing some dramatic climate changes. So some things from the past are really clear to us. But when it comes to describing what a confrontation between two individual creatures like the bear and lion would have been, we have to study and look at the behaviors of their modern counterparts so we can project what we think would have occurred. We use all of the scientific facts that are available to us, as well as modern animal behaviors, to help us create a plausible, realistic fight. Normally, the lion would hunt at night to help it ambush its prey and to save energy. Hunger has pushed it to hunt by day when the mega bear is awake and hunting as well. It is the rising heat that pushes these two ferocious creatures to extreme behavior, the likes of which would reverberate through the centuries. Soaring temperatures top 90 degrees on the plains. Extinction is enveloping Earth. Few large plant eaters are left. We're coming to the end of the Pleistocene, the end of the Ice Age. The environments are changing and animals are pretty stressed. The lion is having a difficult time finding enough food to keep him alive. He's been very lucky that a bison wandered in close enough for him to attack and he made a kill vital for the lion because the lion's literally at the end of his rope. The lion is primarily an ambush hunter. Its great size would seem to make it hard to hide, but it is perfectly suited for its environment. Its coloring matches the brush. It moves silently on padded feet and is able to remain completely motionless for hours. When it strikes, it is lightning quick. The mega bear would smell its prey first. Then, once he had it in sight, he would wait for it to enter striking distance. The bear's taking advantage of the wind. He's coming from downwind. The lion doesn't pick up his scent. He has no idea he's being stalked. The bear is moving up slowly using the trees to help break up the silhouette. The bear moves in short bursts of speed. He was not built for long sprints in the heat. Shorter, controlled bursts also allow him to assess the situation to make sure he's not headed into an ambush. His first option is to scare a rival predator away and take its prey. The lion has to have this meal. His life depends on it. The bear comes bursting out of a grove of trees, roaring at the top of his lungs at a full gallop faster than a modern horse. The lion turns to face this attack. The bear expects the lion to run, but the lion doesn't. The lion stands his ground. Bears in our own time are designed to hibernate. In the Ice Age, there were no seasonal weather changes. The mega bear ate the same amount year round giving it an insatiable need to hunt. It towers over the lion. This bear is nearly 11 and a half feet tall. He's a massive, massive animal, and he's very intimidating. The lion, normally, this would be enough for him to turn tail and run, but he can't. He cannot afford to leave this prey. The end of the Ice Age set off a major movement of species. Cold weather animals moved north, while smaller, swifter animals that were more difficult to hunt replaced them. When the bear faced another predator, he spread his arms wide to look as intimidating as possible. But this exposed his only weakness, his unprotected stomach. The lion was unable to take advantage of that soft underbelly. And all he can do is clamp those huge jaws on the back of the bear. 
But the bear's body mass is so thick, and that fat layer is so immense, it doesn't do a lot of damage. It hurts, but it certainly doesn't do a lot of damage to the bear. The bear is able to shake the lion off and regain his footing. He has a thick layer of fat to combat the cold that also makes him harder to hold on to. The lion takes the next step and makes a mock charge, hoping that the bear will stand again on his hind legs, because the lion intent is to go in this time and try to grab the bear by the underbelly. But the bear doesn't stand up. The bear simply rears back and begins to shift his center of gravity to launch his own attack. This time, the bear comes full, and he doesn't stop. When it mounts a bear rush, the mega bear moves at top speed. But it remains fully balanced, using the eight-inch claws on its feet to dig into the ground and provide traction. It is perfectly poised to use its claws with extreme dexterity. He can swing those paws like a professional baseball player can swing a bat. And when he hits you, he's going to hit you with an incredible amount of force. It's not just the claws, it's the sheer force of the swing that's going to cause the damage. The mega lion's skull is much thicker than the modern lion. It could absorb a blow from a shovel to the head and quickly recover. Its strategy when facing a fellow predator was to circle until it could find where it was vulnerable. Once it identified its target, it would lunge and fake to maneuver its opponent into exposing its weak spot. The lion comes forward with a couple of mock charges, and the bear has a tendency to want to stand on those hind legs, and that's what the lion wants. But the bear doesn't stand up all the way, and that makes the lion's attack useless. The bear continues to do his mock charges in hopes that if that lion will just turn to run, the bear will be able to bypass those weapons, those teeth, and those claws. With the temperature rising, the mega lion would ultimately be replaced by the much smaller cougar and leopard. It simply took too much energy for the mega lion to feed itself in the greater heat. He's running out of energy and knows that it's now or never. He lunges forward, arms out in front of him, and attacks the face of the bear. This move brings the mega lion directly into the range of those powerful teeth and jaws, and the short-faced bear uses them to his full advantage. The mega bear will actually use wrestling moves in a fight, including trying to pin an opponent. This will render it harmless with the lowest risk of injury. He grabs the mega lion by the midsection, crunches down, cracking and breaking ribs, and then rips back. The mega lion roars in pain and then slumps to the ground. Figuring that the lion is unable to continue the fight, the short-faced bear turns his attention to the bison and begins to feed. Both of these mammals needed huge amounts of food to survive. The mega bear could consume up to 30 pounds of meat at a time. But would this meal be his last? The Ice Age has come to an end, and global warming has thrown the ecosystem of North America into utter chaos. Animals were forced to adapt, migrate, or die. Mass migration brought new diseases that indigenous creatures had no resistance to. With the food supply dwindling, even dominant predators could find themselves fighting for prey. Bison were one of the few herbivores that actually thrived in the warmer temperatures. The grasslands expanded in the heat, offering them a larger food supply. The bear's attention is clearly on the bison. Its mind is no longer focused on the fight. Although the lion is down, he's certainly not out. The mega lion is most comfortable hunting at night. Like all cats, his large eyes gave him superior night vision. But that does not help him now. The only hope the lion has is to crush the windpipe of the bear. If it can bite with enough force to penetrate that thick hide of the bear, they'll succeed in winning the day. 
The lion's long tail gives him added agility. Before the lion can reach the bear's throat, the bear is able to hold off the attacker with its arms. The lion tries in vain to grab the throat, but the bear is just too powerful. The Ice Age favored power over speed. Larger animals were better insulated. The lion is in excruciating pain from the force of the bear's throw, but he won't give up. Because of the lack of available food, his survival instincts won't allow him to turn tail and run, even though it seems like he's fighting a losing battle. He turns to face the bear and bellows a huge roar to send a clear message, this fight is to the death. The bear's roar would seem as loud as an oncoming train. a direct hit to the face of the bear. Temporarily blinded and disoriented, the bear loses its footing and crashes to the ground. This gives the lion the opening that it's been waiting for. The lion's senses are keen, even its whiskers, which could pick up vibrations. It can sense animals as small as a mouse in pitch darkness. The lion is desperate, and the only way it can win is to get to the throat. With the last remaining strength, he lunges towards the bear. The force of the impact knocks the bear backwards, and the lion grabs the throat. The lion needed almost 40 pounds of meat a day to survive. Without it, the mega lion would quickly weaken. The bear is able to regain his footing and towers over its rider. It throws the 750-pound mega lion with little effort. Unfortunately for the lion, the bear happens to throw it in the direction of the cave. The cave is over 85 feet deep. A deadly drop. It's a sheer drop to the bottom that nothing can survive. The herbivore bones that were found in the cave show no signs of predation. So this tells us that nothing that went into that cave lived to eat the bodies of the other victims. Although the cave meant certain death to animals, it would also yield groundbreaking benefits to paleontologists. The great thing about a cave is that it helps preserve the evidence because the bones aren't exposed to the normal elements that can erode the facts and alter the clues but that's of little comfort to the animals who happen to fall into it. Having claimed the life of the mega lion, Natural Trap Cave would continue to accumulate thousands of other victims over the next 10,000 years. The mega lion is not the only victim to fall prey to the trap. As the environments continue to get worse, even the apex predator, like the short-faced bear, would be forced to take advantage of any food source it could find. And like the lion, it would have been lured into the cave with the promise of meat, but would have found death waiting at the bottom of the cave. Giant predators like the mega lion and short-faced bear would eventually be unable to sustain themselves in the warmer climates, with the mega bear being replaced by the smaller brown bear and grizzly. But they remain some of the largest and most ferocious mammals ever to walk the earth. The trap cave still holds thousands of individual bones and many more that have yet to be dug up. It's one of the richest fossil finds in North America and one of the greatest sources of mammal fossils in the world.